Hello guys, this is Doron's Movies and today I'll be giving you the lore of Draenor as explained in Chronicle Volume 2. Covering the origin of the world and how it was shaped in the ancient days. So without further ado, let's get into the lore. In a distant corner of the great dark beyond, a relatively small world took shape many years in the past. The native races would call it different names, Dogar, Rakshar, but the most common one and the one we know today is Draenor. Draenor was never unique in the same sense as Azeroth because it didn't house a world soul titan, however it did stand out in other ways. As opposed to many other worlds, Draenor had an abundance of the fifth element known as the spirit of life and this meant that the native elements were pacified and that nature was growing at an insanely accelerated pace. In fact, the spirit of life was so strong that it didn't take long until the entire planet was just one big untamed jungle teeming with predators and creatures of all shapes and sizes. However, these predators were not animals but instead carnivorous plants known as the spore mounds. These plants were extremely dangerous unlike anything on other worlds that we have seen as their hunger was endless and they constantly consumed life around them, growing stronger by the day, eventually dominating the entire planet. To make things even worse, they absorbed much of the spirit of life element that they actually gained a weird form of intelligence. Through this energy, they acted as a brain of a hive mind and managed to control all other plants, turning them into a single massive organism known as the Ever Growth. Meanwhile, the titan Agramar was on his mission to cleanse the universe that eventually took him to the world of Draenor. The planet was initially of no particular interest due to the lack of a world soul, nonetheless he was very much intrigued as never before had he seen such untamed life and diverse nature. The titan was impressed by the Evergrowth, but not long after he realized that he would need to get involved, otherwise the spore mounds would become so powerful that all other life would be consumed, including the elemental spirits and ultimately the Evergrowth itself, turning Draenor into a complete wasteland. Agramar was kind of in a hurry as at the time Sergenas had departed and he alone was left to fight the big demonic threat to the universe, however as a titan and a naturally benevolent creature he couldn't just abandon this newfound planet to its fate, so he came up with a plan to get rid of the spore mounds as that would stop the evergrowth and bring back the natural balance. Knowing that if he intervened himself, he could seriously damage the planet due to his colossal power, he decided to do what the titans normally do, create a servant in their own image to do their bidding. Using the actual elements of Draenor, Agramar brought the largest mountain on the planet to life, making it stand on two massive legs. This creation was named Grond and at the titans command it set out on a mission to save the world. Initially, Grond dredged out seas, carved valleys and mountains in order to separate the wild nature, thus splitting it and making it weaker. Then he went forth and attacked the closest spore mound, destroying it with ease. The other spore mounds saw this and feared for their existence for the first time, knowing that they couldn't stand a chance against Grond alone, at least not in their current form. So what they did is drain large swaths of the surrounding forests, absorbing as much strength as possible in order to take shape and actually walk the world. Soon enough, three massive spore mounds arose, Sank, Botan and Nanu and they all headed into the largest battle the world had ever seen. During the intense fight, Grond managed to defeat two of them with great effort but the last one, Botan, absorbed their lifeless bodies, growing larger than he ever was and managing to overwhelm Grond. 
The elemental collapsed and crumbled under his weight, forming a mountain range of a zone later known as Negrand. Interestingly enough, from the dead bodies of the spore mounds and ground, new life would arise. However, it was kind of different because from the death of the Evergrowth, many unique beings sprouted, the most formidable one being the Genosaur. However, a completely different thing happened with the remains of ground. Initially, boulders arose known as the Colossals, that were made in his image but much smaller, and as he was built from immense elemental energies, the actual elementals of the planet managed to for the first time manifest themselves in a physical form. Most powerful of these spirits were the so-called Furies, Aboreas, Gordog, Incinerators, and Calandrios. Agramar, kinda disappointed, was not willing to give up on Draenor yet, and he took notice of these new creations and saw great potential in the Colossals, the Children of Grodd. Deciding to put an end to the Evergrowth for good, the Titan created massive stone discs and attached them to the newly formed Colossals, empowering them significantly. The discs contain Titan runes of power, tailored specifically to fight plant life, based on the lessons learned from the death of Grom. As Agamar set them forth, he was eager to evaluate their performance and save Draenor, but unfortunately he sensed a world being destroyed at this time by his former teacher Sarkiras and urgently had to leave. He was hoping to return to Draenor one day, but sadly that day would never come, and his creations were now the only thing that kept the world from being conquered by the Evergrowth. The Colossals continued on their mission and set out to defeat Botan. Knowing that the Evergrowth was far too powerful to fight face to face on their own home turf, they launched many separate attacks, beating them outside of their territory. Now a war followed that would shake Draenor for thousands of years to come. Bodies of titanic creations litter the ground, and interestingly enough, from them, just how they rose from ground, new creatures emerged known as Magdaron. They were powerful, but not nearly on the level of their ancestors, and the Colossals called them to their side, but they didn't obey and showed absolutely no loyalty to them, however it was still in their blood to constantly oppose the Evergrowth. After a millennia of fighting, worn out by attrition and constant war, the Colossals decided to take a desperate course of action and make a final stand. Using their immensely powerful titanic discs that still remained, they all charged the Evergrowth and swarmed the Spore Mount Botan and at the same time exploded. This massive blast destroyed both parties and flung their remains across the entire planet. As all of their power was consumed, no creature would rise from their corpses and eventually their remains would become only what we know today as black rock ore. However, the death of the last spore mound was very much different. Initially, a lot of life died out and the Evergrowth took an immense blow to their structure, but wherever his fragments fell, new forests would bloom. The bulk of his corpse would later become known as Felon, but the Evergrowth in its intelligent form would cease to exist. Even though defeated and the titanic constructs victorious, there was no peace and from this point forth, the descendants of the two factions would continue to battle each other until the end of the world. Alright and that is all I have for this video, do give me your feedback on this video and if you would like to see the continuation of this mini series explaining who the descendants of these factions were and how many of the native Draenor races were created. Also don't forget to like the video and subscribe as it really helps out and keeps all the content going. Thanks a lot for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and see you next time.